Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight uh, for this town hall. This town hall is intended to um, just keep lines of communication open with our families and to give you updates on where things are holding. Um, so there will be some information that we share with you tonight. As always, we like to um, begin our gatherings with some Divrei Torah. Um, so I, I had uh, one, one of my rebellion when I was at YU a um, long time ago, was Rav Shmuel Golden. Uh, Rav Shmuel Golden is uh, a big name uh, in, in, our, in our world. Um, he used to teach at YU. He's uh, written books on the Torah. Uh, he, um, he was the head of the RCA for, for quite some time. He has since made Aliyah, but continues, uh, continues to spread Torah all over the world. Um, so he had this um, amazing story that he always loved to tell, uh, both as a student of his, but also I've seen him um, since my YU days, and he still loves to tell this story of um, the, this person that is basically working, uh, is, is working in this camp, and, um, and, and he's basically, his job is to fill up, uh, it, it, he's, it, he's working in this camp, and then every night when he leaves this camp after he's done doing his work, um, he is rolling out these wheelbarrows of hay, and he gets stopped by this uh, security person at the gate because you're not supposed to take anything from the camp, and the security person stops him, um, and he says, and, and, and he actually digs through the hay to actually see if he's taking anything from the camp, and obviously he doesn't find anything inside the hay, and he lets him go. And the next day, the security guard is there again, and this person is working in the camp, and he is filling up the, you know, he's, he's wheeling up this wheelbarrow filled with hay. And again, as he's coming up, the security guard stops him and he looks through the hay to make sure he's not taking anything from the camp. He doesn't find anything in the hay and he lets him go. And this goes on for days and weeks and months and years. And after many, many years, the security guard is ready to retire from the camp. And Rav Golden says, he stops this man on his last night on the job and he says to the man, I have to ask you, you've been doing this, the, the same thing for so many years, every single night when you leave here is wheeling out this wheelbarrow full of hay. I have to ask you, and I'm retiring tonight. I promise I won't tell anybody. I'm just really curious. Why all these years have you been stealing hay? And he looks at him, the guard, and he says, you missed the point. For all these years, I've been stealing wheelbarrows. And Rav Golden left to tell that story in a way to tell us that the details are really important. But what's even more important is that we don't lose sight of the big picture. So we're going to go through some details tonight. And I want to remind us that the details are very important. But the big picture is also really important. So for a moment, I just want to talk about what that big picture is. So in this week's Parsha, I did exactly what Rav Golden was talking about as I was trying to prepare for tonight to prepare some words of Torah. I was looking through the Parsha and I was looking through every Pasuk and every word, trying to find that message just if I can find something. What does Rashi say and what does uh, Sforno say? And then I finally realized that, that what Rav Golden was trying to tell me is there's a big picture that is really looking at you in the face. Find that big picture. And here's the big picture from this week's Parsha. And there's so many details in this week's Parsha of, of the way Yaakov took the bracha and the way Esau reacted and Yitzchak and Rivka. There's so many details in all these stories. But by the very end, there's a pasuk. This is literally at the end of the parsha, where Yaakov actually gets his bracha. And the bracha is, and Hashem will bless you, and he, and he, will, he will make you fruitful and multiply. Amim. He doesn't say vayita lami amim. Doesn't say that you should just be a people. He says vayita likhal amim. Right? That you should be a kehila of nations, a kehila of people. So tonight we're going to hear some details, but I hope that what we take away from tonight is that just as important as the details are, the big message is just as important as well, which is we are not just a people. We are not just people that are living together in the greater DC community and being joined together in our school. We are a kehila, and that is a Burman kehila. So tonight we're gonna to hear about the steps that we have taken together as a kehila, 
where we've gotten to as a kehila and the steps that we need to continue to take for the sake of our entire kehila. I'm gonna share my screen. Actually, before I do, I wanna make one other note because again, the, the details are important, but we don't wanna lose the big picture. There are so many details that go into every single day. On a, and then in a typical year, there are so many details that go into every single day to make the school operate and to teach your children. Certainly during a COVID year, there are even more details that go into every single day. And you know, there's there are students in person and there's students owling in and every student has a different need and we're trying to get supplies to the kids who aren't there and we're trying to, to make sure that people are healthy. There's so many details that are going into this, but I wanna make sure that we also do not forget the big picture. And the big picture is Thanksgiving is coming up. We don't need to wait for Thanksgiving, but this is a great time as we're all preparing for Thanksgiving. I beg you, remember the big picture and thank a teacher. Send an email, send a text message, reach out. There's a million and one details going into every single day. But the big picture is that there are people behind that who are committed, dedicated, passionate, loving, caring, professional teachers who are working so hard every day to reach our children in any possible way during a very atypical year. So I beg you, we are so embroiled in the details nowadays. Let's use Thanksgiving as a reminder. Let's use some time to thank a teacher. It'll just take a text message or a short email and it'll mean the world. So without further ado, I will share my screen now. So we, we've received questions um, from all of you. Thank you so much for submitting the questions in advance. Uh, we will also with, um, hopefully we will leave time and have time at the end to take more questions. Um, but what we've done is we took uh, um, all the questions that we got, we categorized them, and we are trying to answer them um, with this presentation. Um, if you have questions uh, after this presentation, again, if, you, if we have time, we will take questions. Otherwise, you can always feel free to email me. So considerations for decisions. There were questions about um, originally what we've done, um, it, we put out metrics that we have a very black and white metric, and this is how we're gonna make our decision between uh, in-person school or virtual school. Obviously you've seen our communications as to uh, our decision with our medical task force in consultation with the medical task force that um, we have obviously passed that metric and we are, um, we are still hosting in-person school. Um, people have asked us, so what are you going to be basing the decisions on moving forward? These are the considerations for the decisions that the medical task force is working with every single week. And now it's not even just a weekly meeting. Uh, there's, there's typically even more than one meeting and certainly many conversations throughout the week, not just one meeting. But we're looking at the county numbers, including case incidents and positivity rate. As you know, the, the case incidents and the positivity rates have been going up. We have been keeping an eye on those. With that, we are looking at case incidents within the surrounding Burman community. So reaching out to, um, to shuls, to the rabbis of the shuls, also reaching out to the other schools, I have a weekly call with the, with the other schools, and really just understanding and finding out what they're seeing, what kinds of cases are we seeing in the community and in, in community, any community transmission. And finally, we look at case incidents within our school, students, faculty, and staff, because we wanna know, we certainly wanna know big adult where the county is, then we go from the county to the surrounding Burman community, and we go from the surrounding Burman community into Berman itself, students and faculty and staff. So those are the considerations for the decisions. When we look at that, we also wanna make sure that we're looking at not just um, one, you know, one or two cases here or there that might be in different divisions or that are unrelated to each other. What we look at is linked transmissions, right? So what will, what will actually make our decisions one way or another is are we having uh, random cases here and there or are we actually seeing linked transmissions where maybe a couple of people within the same, a couple of students within the same pod or a couple of teachers within the same classroom. Once we begin to see linked transmissions, then that actually starts to tell us that there might be transmission actually within Berman. And then we might want to actually shut down a pod or a division. Uh, when I say shut down, sorry, we might want to go virtual 
with a pod or a specific division. Uh, but that is really what we are looking at. We are not just looking at the county numbers anymore. We are looking at how those numbers correlate to the numbers that we're seeing in our community and then correlate into Berman. And, and then even with Berman, are, is, is, are those linked in any way? We do have a COVID-19 dashboard that can be accessed at this site, um, BermanHebrewAcademy.org slash dashboard. Uh, we urge you to check it. We've received uh, questions from people um, you know, who wanted to know about um, both county numbers and what's happening at Berman. Um, this dashboard will actually share that with you. So it looks like this. There's Montgomery County data. When you log in, you will see the current averages, a seven day average for the county. You'll see the positivity rate for the 14 day average for the county. And then you'll see current Berman cases, students and faculty, and how many uh, pod closures we currently have. And then, oh, sorry. And then you will see current case descriptions. So these two cases that you're seeing will actually have descriptions down here. So this was a lower school teacher. This was a clinical diagnosis has re resulted in closure of the two pods. So the two pods that you're seeing here were actually a result of this one teacher. And then we have a middle school student who tested positive during a quarantine and has not been on campus since November 6th. Uh, they will continue at home quarantine following our decision tree guidelines. So our guidelines, we do have a, a, a decision tree um, on how we make these decisions based on, um, based on symptoms and reports uh, that, that our medical task force looks, like, uh, looks at, and then we make decisions uh, about quarantines. Um, if a student or staff member tests positive, we do ask that you please respect the privacy of that person. We will notify the contacts and we will take necessary precautions while maintaining confidentiality during the contact tracing process in accordance with the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. I understand and we understand that it's very nerve wracking when you find out that there's a positive case, uh, whether it's in your child's pod or grade or division um, or even in the school. Uh, we have seen people react. This is obviously a very anxiety-inducing uh, situation, a very anxiety-inducing time, but we ask that you, um, you allow us to do the work that we need to do when it comes to contact tracing and communication. People asked, what are the protocols with a suspected or positive case? So first off, each potential case is analyzed by our medical task force. We do have a medical task force uh, that consists of uh, four medical professionals, as well as a few of the Berman professionals that sit on the task force. In the event of a positive case, the COVID dashboard will be updated, the dashboard that you just saw, and we will notify the impacted pod or grade with quarantine directions, as well as virtual learning instructions. So if you hear of a positive case, stay tuned to your emails. If it is within your pod, or if you, do, uh, if you are one of the impacted people, um, you will certainly hear from us. We will also take preventive actions if there's a strong suspicion of COVID in a pod or a grade. So sometimes it's not just about a positive case. Sometimes it's about if we know that somebody had a known exposure or if somebody had a known exposure plus they're, they're having symptoms, we may not wait for, um, for a, uh, a positive result. We may proactively uh, shut down a pod or a grade. Travel and hosting guidelines. We have sent this out. Uh, we have communicated this more than once, but we will review it now. Um, very briefly, um, I would encourage you to uh, check your email. And if you don't have it, we will send it out again. Uh, but the, the travel guidelines, basically travel and hosting, travel out of town and hosting out of town guests is strongly discouraged. If you travel to any state or county that is a red zone, students will need to quarantine for 14 days. We wanna make sure that we, we are discouraging travel. We wanna make sure to keep our community safe. We are asking, we are encouraging, we are pleading with you to please stay put, uh, certainly as numbers go up, not just in our county, not just in our state, but around the country. This is what our map looks like right now. So a lot of the country is a red zone and the rationale behind uh, the expansion of our travel guidelines is really, you know, when people stay home, you're gonna stay home, you're gonna to go to work, uh, you might stop at the supermarket, but really you're taking whatever precautions you need to take uh, within your routines, your typical routines. But when you are traveling, certainly there's less inhibitions. Uh, when people travel, they certainly wanna be out and about. The very nature of travel is to be out and about. You're around more people, uh, people outside of our community. Um, 
you might want to go out and grab a bite. You might want to go out to restaurants or out to the beach or wherever you're traveling. The nature of vacation is to be out and about. This is not over yet, right? I understand that we are really fatigued. I understand that we are really tired and we are ready for this to be over, but this is not over yet. So we are pleading with you. We know that Thanksgiving is coming up. We know that winter break is coming up. So we beg you to please, if it's not absolute necessities, please stay put. By the way, we, we also sent out a couple of links uh, with our travel guidelines that you should check if you are planning to travel. But please, again, note that our uh, guidelines are that if you do travel to a county or a state. So even if you're seeing on this map that there are some places that are orange, but within those, there might be some red counties. And we did send out the pandemic websites to, to use the, that if you are even traveling to an orange state, you should really look at whether the counties they were traveling to are red because it does break it down by county. Because if you travel to a red county or state, we would ask your students to quarantine for 14 days after your return. These are ongoing discussions. People really want to know, um, you know what, what discussions are we having? What things are we considering moving forward? So a number of ongoing discussions that we are currently having. I'll start with the bottom because really th these are just permanent on our agenda every single week to discuss with the medical task force. We do look at the metrics. We do look at the community transmission. That is just a, a, a weekly agenda item uh, during our meetings. We are also looking at the Smachot guidelines. We want to review those. We want to make sure that um, you know, people have not just the information that they need, but we are really encouraging people to, at this point in time, certainly when the county has already uh, said that gatherings should really be limited, we are begging our community to really follow suit to really remember when this whole pandemic started and we all sort of went into Zoom world and Zoom smachot and virtual world, we beg you to really, for the sake of the community, for the health and safety of the community, um, please, I mean, when, when you're planning your smachot, please keep this in mind. We're also talking about the fact that winter is coming and fact of the matter is, uh, this is going to be our first winter through COVID. We have not experienced COVID during a winter. Uh, when COVID first hit, when we were all shut down, that was March 13th. Um, and by the time we really knew what was happening, it was already Pesach. And, uh, and by the time we were ready to come out of our shells and start hanging out with people, spring was upon us and we had nice weather. So we went in the spring and the summer and we were able to hang out outdoors. Now winter is coming, it's getting colder. People wanna gravitate indoors. And we all know that we are social creatures and we understand that people are going to want to hang out the medical task force is having conversations. We want to be um, realistic and responsive, but we also want to maintain responsibility to the community. So we are having conversations about what is winter going to look like and what, and what would be acceptable uh, within uh, Berman guidelines for the winter. So stay tuned for those, those are ongoing discussions. I want to talk about responsibility and accountability as I uh, opened with. Uh, this is not just about the details. I just went through a lot of detail, but it's really about the big picture. And the big picture, as I said in our Parsha and Toldot, is that the, the bracha of Yaakov is actually one of a, a kehila. Right? So as a kehila, we have a communal responsibility and also communal accountability, which means accountability to each other. So these are things that I, I'm really asking of you, right? I've, I've just shared with you everything that we're doing, everything that we've been doing. Um, I didn't even bore you with the uh, repetition of the fact that we have the PPEs and the masking and the sanitization. We've talked about all that, but I wanna to talk to you for a moment about our communal responsibility and accountability. So first is please practice safe measures. As I said, I understand that we are fatigued but we are already starting to hear um, about uh, sleepovers. We're already starting to hear about uh, people having people within their homes for meals. We need to ask you and beg you, those are not safe measures. Those are not protocols that, that, that we are prepared for. The numbers are going up. We wanna beg you to continue to follow the Berman protocols. I understand that we're social creatures, we just need to um, hunker down for a bit. We will try to put out some protocols, but for now we beg you to please hang in there. Um, please, practice, please practice safe measures. 
as you've heard me say before, the individual does not get to supersede the community in this case. And by uh, not practicing those safe measures, there is the capacity for you to shut down a, a, a pod or grade or division. Reminder, please stay home when members of your family are, are not feeling well and please reach out to Miriam Kotek immediately. Her email is kotekm at mjbha.org. Even if you think you know what it is or you think you know what it might be, please just, it's better for you to stay home. It's better for your children to stay home for a day. Reach out to Miriam Kotek. She will give you further instructions on where to go from there. Please respond to daily symptoms check honestly. Um, we know and we say that uh, with full confidence that we understand that people are trying their best and people are, are being honest, but because for so long uh, we've had it really good and people have been feeling well and we've gone through spring and summer and now uh, certainly the beginning of the year, everyone's been feeling great during our return. So we've all been checking off um, uh, no to all the above. Uh, we've been hitting that one on the on the um, on our on our uh, system on in, in the email in the morning um, alert media. But I want to remind you that there are other options there that might be relevant to you, and I want you to read over it carefully. Please don't do by rote. The next time you get that email, please read through the options because it does ask questions about: Is anyone in your family actually experiencing these symptoms? Is actually is there a pending test for anybody in your family? Please make sure that you respond to the symptoms check honestly and clearly, because it will give you further instructions. Please do not just click on it, because we really need to know. Um, please protect our community. I mean, this is our community. Um, this, this, the, the protection of our community and the safety of our community relies on all of us. The protection of our community and the safety of the community is not just about what is Berman doing to keep us safe. And I've heard people ask that. What's the school gonna do to keep us safe? And what I'm asking all of you and what I'm, I'm pleading with all of you about is it is not just about what Berman is going to do to keep us safe. It's what are we all going to do to keep us safe? This is a communal responsibility and we are Kehila. I beg you for the sake of our students, for the sake of our teachers who desperately do want to be in school together, who want to learn together, but it's really difficult to learn with anxiety and fear. And the fear will only increase and the anxiety will only increase if we don't see that everybody's doing their part and everybody's pulling their weight. We are all in this together. And lastly, on the responsibility and accountability part, I beg you to please practice their adherence. We had a situation this past week um, where we had to shut down the middle school, where we had to go virtual for one day. And unfortunately, there were some things that were shared and some things that were said about a family. This family came forward and we used that information and we made the decision that we felt was best for our middle school community in that moment, given, given the situation, given the information and given the timing. But the response that this family got was not one that was actually reflective of the value of their parents that we would wanna see in our school from some members of our community. And I ask you, and I beg you, if there's backlash, if a family comes forward, or if a family shares information, that then we, that warrants us shutting down a pod, or shutting down a grade, or division, and sending them virtual, whether it's for a day, or for two weeks, what is going to happen is that people will no longer come forward. People will stop telling us and sharing information when they're traveling or when they're not feeling well or when someone's having symptoms or is going out to get tested. We cannot be afraid of sharing this information with each other. We have to destigmatize the idea of COVID. It cannot be that people are afraid of sharing that information because we're worried about the stigma about our family or if people are gonna to wanna to talk to us or if people are ever gonna want another play date with our kids. That's not where we wanna go as a community. I beg you for the value of their hearts in our community. Let's treat everybody with their herits, with the respect that we want in our community. And let's make sure that we are encouraging each other to actually share information, that we are encouraging each other to take the proper precautions, that we are actually encouraging each other to work with the school and to take the proper precautions. So please don't just wait for the school to, to be an enforcement agency. Please actually take your steps also, both for yourselves and for your neighbors and for your friends. These were the words that were said by Governor Hogan. 
and we wanted to use them tonight because they are very apropos. More important than any public health order is our willingness to take personal responsibility and make necessary sacrifices. More important than any public health order is our willingness to take personal responsibility. But it's not just about personal responsibility. He said, and make necessary sacrifices. He just said that this past week. I know that this is so difficult. It is so challenging. And I'm telling you, in the building, there are so many things going on every single day. And our teachers are literally exhausted by the end of the day, trying to reach every student with all the protocols and the masks and the plexiglass and the owls and the student in front of them. There's so much going on. It's about taking personal responsibility, but it's making necessary sacrifices. So I remind you and I beg you, the individual does not get to supersede the needs of the community at this point in time. The numbers in the county have been rising and continue to rise. So I beg you, this is not just about Berman's return to campus. It is about Berman's capacity to remain on campus. And that is not just up to us, the people that are in the building every day. It is up to all of us that live in this community, that send our children into this community every single day to learn. I thank you for your attention. And I started by saying that it is Thanksgiving time and that we should all thank a teacher. I wanna take a moment to thank the teachers who are working so tirelessly every single day. It is absolutely unbelievable to watch the ways that they have created to reach every child. I wanna thank the unbelievable work of our faculty. I also wanna thank the amazing administrative team that I get to work with every single day. I am blessed and humbled to work with this committed group. You would be shocked if you saw the timestamps on the emails and the text messages and the WhatsApp groups of the ungodly hours that this administrative team is awake, working hard to make sure that these children can actually come and learn safely and productively. I'm so blessed and humbled to work with this administrative team and the unsung heroes. Again, this is Thanksgiving and I just wanna take a moment to thank people together. The unsung heroes in our school, the people who don't get a lot of credit, but it's the people who are staffing our kitchen safely and finding ways to deliver food, hot food to our, to our kids daily in a safe way. The people who are sanitizing our building day and night, the people that are cleaning the playgrounds and cleaning the restrooms and making sure that our kids have safe spaces and safe desks to come to every single morning. It's the unsung heroes in our building. It's the faculty and the staff, it's the administration, but it's also every single person. It's our bus drivers and our bus aides and our nursing staff who are working tirelessly to keep everybody safe. It's the lay leadership on our medical task force who I promise you are not just meeting weekly, but they are getting messages from us even as early as six o'clock this morning. Poor people, I, I know that they probably did not know what they signed up for when they signed up for it, but they are doing, literally it is God's work of keeping everybody safe and it's volunteer work. And finally, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I wanna give a major hakarat to tov to all of you. You worked with us and partnered with us in such tremendous ways when we first went virtual. You are continuing to partner with us, whether your student is on campus or owling in. You continue to partner with us every single day. We, I promise you that we do not take for granted the trust and the confidence that you put into us when you drop your children off in the morning. We play music in the morning because we want children to hear the sounds. We want them to hear the music. And we know that there's such tremendous anxiety from everything that we're hearing from the media and all the numbers and everything around us. We want children to put a smile on their face before they walk into class and feel great about coming to the school and know that we care so much, not just about their learning, but about their whole being. But we know that when you drop them off in the morning, when they get out of that car, we know that what you're giving us is trust and confidence. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your partnership. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your trust. Really, we are doing our best to do God's work every single day which is serving the needs of your children. We are doing our best every day to do this godly work 
And we don't take that for granted. And we thank you for the opportunity to do that with you. I'm gonna stop there and we're gonna open it up for questions. Thank you. Um, first of all, I just wanna say thank you for the side messages um, about the winter's coming line. I appreciate it. Um, the one question that came in is about um, surrounding travel, but also just in our um, the areas surrounding us, such as Baltimore um, or other, other areas where the case incidence is higher than what we're seeing here. How does that impact our daily, our daily school? So right now we've, I mean, we've been talking about it. Um, you know, we, we have families that come in from Baltimore and Virginia and DC. We've been keeping an eye on those numbers. Um, and, and the truth is that the numbers right now um, in, in, in our own counties, uh, in, in, the immediate, so in, in the immediate county surrounding our school um, are, are certainly also seeing the, the, those numbers. Um, our numbers are really um, as, as a community, I'm gonna say like the greater community, irrespective of whether it's DC or Virginia or Baltimore or wherever, we are in a red zone, which is why we're, you know, which is why what I was saying tonight is that we all have to take the proper precautions. So we're speaking to all of our families and we're asking all of our families to take the proper precautions. We're asking, we're taking precautions for the, for the people that do travel in and how they're traveling in. So we have been uh, communicating, not just with the families that are in the immediate surrounding areas, but certainly in the greater community to make sure that they're taking the proper precautions irrespective of where, of where they live. Thank you. Um, there's a question um, surrounding how parents can help partner and what parents can do at home to help encourage masking and distancing um, for their children. This is really important. Thank you for asking that question. Um, you know, I'm going to go back to the theme of Kehila for a moment. Um, this is not supposed to be an us against you, <laughs> right? And unfortunately, depending on the ages of the students, uh, certain students are certainly coming in uh, with a certain, um, I'm going to say a certain attitude of uh, invincibility that um, is uh, certainly very appropriate uh, for certain ages, um, but also that I, I worry um, might be coming uh, from messages either from their homes or from their, or, or from their, their, their enclaves within the community. Um, I beg you what you can do at home is to reinforce the messaging that we are giving you. To say to your children, we are partners with the school and for the sake of Kehila, we are all going to follow this. And when your child says, but I really wanna be able to hang out with that, the answer is, I'm sorry. For the sake of Kehila and for our communal responsibility, the answer is no. And if we all do that, we're not gonna to have to worry about what our neighbor's doing down the street and whether they're quarantining or whether they're taking the right precautions. If we all do that and send our kids with that message to understand that when you go to school, you need to understand that there are protocols in school that we support and we stand by. And we are really looking at that as you know, certainly in the lower school, the kids are very compliant as they get into middle and upper school. You know, we have to remind them a lot more about the social distancing, they're, they're gravitating uh, more toward each other. Um, and, and these are, it's not malicious. They, they just forget or either, either they forget or um, sometimes it's just new behaviors that are hard to pick up, right? Where sometimes they'll want to show a friend something on their cell phone um, during a break, obviously not during class. And instead of actually just WhatsApping into the friend who's six feet away, they'll, they'll want to show it to them on their phone. So they'll credit on the phone. We'll have to remind them to please separate. So we're doing the best that we can, but we can only do the best that we can if you reinforce that messaging at home as well. So whatever you hear from us tonight and in all of our messaging that goes out, please reinforce that with your children at home and get them to uh, understand how important it really is. We have teachers, um, as you know, in divisions of the school that are immunocompromised and cannot be with us uh, in person and are Zooming in. Uh, and we've done the best we can in terms of supporting the students in the classroom with supervision for those teachers, but we also still have teachers who come into our school every single day who are immunocompromised, who do have certain conditions and are coming in and are committed to coming in. So I beg you, this is not a matter of a difference of opinion or whether, whether we really believe in masking all the time or we really believe in the six feet or what you might do in your home versus what we might do in the school. This is literally a matter of public health for our school community. There are people that are still coming in every single day to serve the needs of your children. 
And they're doing it on the premise that, that we will have your support, that you will practice the proper protocols, that you will take the proper precautions in your homes and in, in, in the larger community. Um, I'm answering some questions in the chat, but I will I'll bring one out. Um, the possibility of doing some type of testing initiative. That is definitely on the table. Um, we are. Um, we talked about it from the very beginning, from the very get go. Um, I, I know that there have been other schools that that, that have done it. Um, from the get go, the county has actually um, recommended that we not do mass testing um, because. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it actually only gives you a snapshot in time, right? So certainly when we're dealing with, uh, especially when, when you get into the older uh, age groups in our school where they already have this feeling of, of, of invincibility, um, that the uh, getting the test is a moment in time that if you test at a certain moment and you have this uh, certain uh, false sense of confidence that now you can sort of maybe compromise on some of the protocols uh, or be a little laissez-faire about them, it's just not true, right? It's, it's, not a it's not a preventive measure. It's a surveillance measure, but it's not preventive. Um, the other reason was that um, it really um, then um, messes with the numbers um, of the county, right? Because we want to look at the percentage of positivity rates and, and percentage of cases per 100,000. So um, when, when, you know, the more we do mass testing uh, for surveillance purposes, then it, 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 um, it messes with the numbers uh, in terms of the percentages. So we are uh, putting that back on the table. Certainly as the cases can, you know, as cases are rising, we did bring that back to the table with the medical task force. We are going to take a look at it again uh, and going to discuss it again. We will keep you posted if we uh, change our direction on the testing. Um, regarding Thanksgiving, is there any plan to do a two-week quarantine or learning virtual after that time? Uh, you know, it's you know, it's when when we wanted to first open school. I remember all the messages I got on both sides of the fence, right? Uh, people that said yes, please open school, and people that said please do not do this. If we open right after Sukkot. Uh, certainly there will be a lot of community transmission. People are gonna be uh, traveling over Sukkot and we will certainly see a spike within our school community. We went back, we went back safely with our protocols and our plans in hand. And we actually did not see that spike within the Berman community. So we did it and we did it well. Um, you know, what I said during that time is something that I wanna say again. It's that I understand that we want to travel. I understand that Thanksgiving is a time for family and for friends and being around our tables. And so was Pesach, and we didn't have that. And so was Sukkot, and we didn't have that. So I know that we're tired, and we, are, we really would love to have a Thanksgiving. But in the same way that we just didn't have a typical Pesach, in the same way that we didn't have a typical Sukkot, instead of asking the entire community to make the sacrifice and uh, go virtual for a couple of weeks, um, I, I, I want to turn to the community and say, please take the proper precautions over Thanksgiving. And if you are traveling, if you are having out of town guests, please do the proper uh, quarantines afterwards. But for the, for the community people who do need to be in the school, who want to be in the school, whose livelihoods and jobs depend on the childcare that we provide in the school, right? People still have to go back to work. So this is what I was saying earlier is that the individual cannot supersede the need of the community. So I understand that there might be some people who wanna travel or might wanna have those out of town guests, but there are literally people in our community who depend their whose livelihood depend on that childcare and on their kids being in school. So let's just take that into consideration in terms of the communal responsibility. So at this point in time, I'm still leaving on the table that we will reopen school in person after Thanksgiving. If anything changes based on what we see in the community over Thanksgiving, we we may it's not a threat. I'm not threatening, but based on what we see, if we have to go in a different direction, we will certainly update you. Thank you. Um, I think that all of the questions have come in. Um, there was a request to post the map um, so everyone can see in advance. So we shared it during the presentation, um, but we'll send it out tomorrow, but it's on, um, we're using the Harvard pandemics website, um, but basically you can just assume that anywhere you wanna go is red. So don't go anywhere. Um, and then I think that that's it. 
So yes, I mean, thank you again for your attention to this. I know, um, you know, I know that it is, it has been an exhausting, it's actually uh, pretty wild to, to think that it has been over eight months since the governor first gave us that order to shut things down. It has been over eight months. So we kind of look back and laugh when we first sent you that first communication of, don't worry, we'll be back in two weeks. Yeah. Um, we, we, we sort of joke with that now um, that we never thought that it would be uh, this long. So I know that it is tiring. Um, please stay put, please take the proper precautions. Our travel guidelines, and if you are gonna be traveling over Thanksgiving or winter break, our, tra our travel guidelines that we've expanded for the two week quarantine if you go to red zone is not a punishment. It is asking you to fulfill a communal responsibility, to take a personal responsibility upon yourself to say, you know what, if I have a reason that I need to travel, then I need to, for the sake of the community, um, you know, allow my kids to, to go virtual for a couple of weeks to make sure that I am maintaining the health and safety of the community. It is not a punishment. You're just asking you to do that as a measure to maintain the health and safety of our entire community. So again, please remember the protocols, please remember the precautions. Um, we will send you the link again that will have the map, but it'll also show you the numbers in counties and, and, uh, and states. Uh, please refer to that. And lastly, please remember to thank a teacher. It'll only take a minute of your time, but it goes a very long way. Thank you so much for your attention and your partnership tonight. Good night.